Over the last few years, I've driven plenty of electric cars, many of which probably deserve to be on the golf course. This, however, is not one of those. If it's not a hole-in-one, it's at least a 300-yard drive. All right, enough of the golf parallels. Let's drive the 2013 Honda Fit EV, all electric, and check the tech. Now, as you can see, the Fit EV is built on the outgoing Fit, not the radically redesigned 2015. It's easy to spot a Fit EV. It's got graphics all over it screaming that, which you'll want to pay a body shop to remove the day you bring it home. At least I would. Also, slightly higher ride height because they packed a bunch of batteries underneath. Now, the most important thing to notice inside the cabin of the Fit EV is a very different instrument panel, fresh and really well laid out as electric cars go. Let's take a quick tour. On the left is your charge or discharge gauge. Down means you're getting energy into the vehicle with regen. Up means you're expending it on acceleration. In the middle, great big speedo, and then the key thing you're going to look at all the time, right underneath there, is the range indicator. And we're going to talk about that little icon next to it in a moment. And then on the far right, you've got this giant gasoline gauge style charge indicator. And then something interesting to the left of that, you've got two parasitic discharge areas. On the upper left shows climate control and how much it is sapping your battery. Turn on things like heater or air conditioning and you're going to show more blue bars there. That's a bad thing. Below that are things like lights or maybe a lot of things plugged into your power outlets. So that tells you what you can get rid of to take less out of the battery and extend your range. Now look over here on the far left side, there are three mode control buttons. You've got the eco at the bottom, norm in the middle, and sport at the top. We'll get on the road and see how these really work. Sometimes they're almost kind of the same thing. You can barely tell a difference. In this car, I think we're in for a surprise. The only place this display breaks down is in that center LCD. You can get into way TMI when you go through some of these historic charge versus average discharge. This is for the hypermile crowd. You don't care. Now on to the head unit. I want to show you the key feature on this. Now watch carefully. It's right down here. You see that? Look right in there. See what that is? That's where you're going to put the crowbar and rip this POS out and throw it away the first day you bring the car home because that sucks. This is a tired old design that dates back to when CNET first started reviewing cars the better part of a decade ago. It does nothing very well, and it's completely out of place in an EV in 2014. So let me tell you, get rid of this. It's a double DIN head unit. You can pop in one of the new Pioneer or Alpine units that have mirror link to more intelligently bring your phone in. There's a Honda EV Link app that lets you control charging, find charging stations in range, precondition the cabin, etc. I've never gotten it to work because Honda's online reg system is amazingly complicated. Now down here under the snout, not a whole lot. Little tiny electric motor and inverter and electric air conditioning compressor and a whole bunch of room as well. What's happening here is a motor fed by a 20 kilowatt lithium ion battery, mostly packaged flat, low under the car. That 20 kilowatt battery is able to get this electric motor to crank out 123 horse, but 189 foot pounds of torque. Torque's the story with EVs, remember. The guy weighs 3,200 plus pounds. That's 630 more than a standard gas fit with an automatic. So oink oink. Hence, 0 to 60 is okay at 9 seconds, but EVs tend to feel faster than they read. We'll see on the road. EPA says you'll get 82 miles on a full charge out of this guy. That'll vary depending on your terrain, driving style, and how many of those parasitic systems you use that we saw on the dash. That's why they're there. That charge will take you anywhere from 15 long hours on a 120 outlet. That's survival stuff is all that is to just three hours on what they call a level two or 240 volt outlet. 118 MPGE is the EPA number for the miles per gallon equivalent compared to the energy cost of gasoline. Now to get a full charge that takes you 80 miles, it's about two bucks here in California at the lowest overnight rate. That same 80 miles covered in the 2015 gas engine fit's gonna run you $8.50. So it's night and day, the cost of getting around on this car, way cheaper. However, its range and charge time have to work for you. Oh, by the way, in addition to that app I showed you, check out this dongle that comes with the Fit EV. It's basically a shortcut version that lets you do things like check your state of charge. You push that button, it goes over the wireless data network and tells me I've got 24% battery right there. I can tell it to charge by hitting this button right here. I can also tell it to pre-charge the climate, all for those who don't want to use an app. Now, my first impression is not a favorable one. I'm a little disappointed with the amount of motor and gear wine that's coming through this cabin. 
that makes it sound like a golf cart, quite literally. I'm not just saying that as some kind of a disc. It sounds like an electric golf cart. It's not horribly intrusive, but it's more than a lot of electric cars I've driven lately, so they need to address that. However, once you get past some of that intrusive whine, what a nice driving little car. It's nicely planted. It doesn't have a brittle suspension. It's very well sort of modulated. Of course, all that weight down low, that extra 600 pounds in the belly, makes it handle better than I recall a gas engine fit, if not quite as sharply. You know what I mean? Now, about these three magic buttons over here on the left, Eco, Normal, and Sport, what a difference. More than any car I've ever driven that has similar buttons. Eco is really tepid. I mean, you can't get much out of this car, but boy, does it make the range improve. When you go to normal, boom, you feel an immediate difference in responsiveness. And when you go to sport, another huge jump. But what you also notice is a big change in those predicted mile ranges there on the gauge. I'm looking at roughly 12 to 15% different between each of the steps. So if you go from eco to sport, I'm ballparking, you lose about a third of your range. Okay, let's price our Fit EV. It's 37.4. Gulp, it's a lot of money for a Fit, but it doesn't matter because you can't buy one. You can only lease them. $259 a month and for only three years, at which point you gotta give it back. Honda gives you a number of things for free that I think sweeten the deal. Free level two charger, although you're on the hook for the installation, that can run five to 1500 bucks typically. Unlimited miles, that's fairly unusual for these kinds of cars. And you're gonna get collision insurance thrown in. That's interesting as well, brings your bill down. So it's really a $9,300 experience to get into the car. Now on the downside, this car has got a crappy head unit, and as I mentioned, kind of a lot of gear and motor whine that surprised me in a bad way. However, it's got a lot more upsides in its overall packaging, handling, performance, and the way they've put the deal together for you. <laughs> 